Good morning, guys. I'm just getting it shared out. I don't know. If, I've never done it this early, so we'll see what we get and see how it goes. Just looking to share it out. If you have any groups you'd like to share it to, go ahead and share it out. Okay. Oh, and I wanted to do one other thing. Hold on one second. Okay, so we're going to start with kind of what's going on in the energies. Um, the energies have been pretty intense. Yesterday was last night. I don't know if any of you felt it, but last night was huge for the solar plexus and the heart. Um, definitely an integration for a lot of people through the solar plexus and their heart connecting in the power center, really just coming through strong that way. Um, it was quite beautiful. Um, <laughs> I forgot I wanted to do the sage when I came on too. My house, I have a, I have a lot of incense going. Well, not a lot, just um, two different ones, two different incense going, and my house smells absolutely intoxicating right now. So I keep getting lost in the fragrance. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're going to cleanse this space and make sure that only that of pure, unconditional love enters through here. Um, and before we get started, we're going to set the tone by clearing, purifying, and sanctifying our minds, our bodies, and our souls our emotional body and our auras. Really wiping clear anything that doesn't serve us and allowing us to stand in the fullness of all that we are. Balance through the feminine and the masculine within. Balance through the shadow and the light within. Just a complete balanced system. Um, so the energies were pretty intense. They have been intense. How are you feeling? Um, today, I'm feeling beautiful. Um, so I wanted to come on and kind of share and help. When I feel that I can hold that energy balance in there, um, right now is when I try to bring myself on to a live because it is, it is a lot of energy to hold this container um, because it's not just anyone who is here in this exact moment. It is anyone who can watch this ever. Right? So you're holding that container the whole time. Um, and it doesn't go away unless you delete the live, unless you take it down. And even then, does it really go away? Because I mean, it's still there on the internet somewhere, isn't it? Um, so there's a lot. 
So the balance between the solar plexus and the heart chakra is what came through extremely strong last night. Really standing in your power and pushing out the energies that don't serve you anymore. Um, and as I channeled yesterday with some of the messages, it's very important that you recognize what is you, okay? Um, I feel like we're shedding so much. We're shedding connections. We're shedding people, places, and things right now that are not in resonance. And maybe they had the potential and maybe they come and it's like a tug of war right it's like a cat and mouse game and so i feel like there's so many people that are just choosing to say no more to that right no and that's about as dark as we can go with that right um and saying no doesn't mean that you're sending negativity saying no means you're standing in your sovereignty and saying I don't consent. I'm not going to allow this anymore. I'm not going to participate in this. I'm not going to say yes out of fears. I'm not going to be coerced into anything. And so when we stand in that authenticity, um, and also I'm feeling very, very strongly to guide here, that saying no and pushing energies out that may be coming, um, also standing in that sovereignty, just because there's a connection in the etheric world with someone does not mean that connection is right for you in this human world. Maybe they're not doing the work that needs to be done. Maybe you were taken for granted. Maybe you're not in alignment right now. It doesn't mean that maybe you won't be. Um, for some, it does mean that maybe you won't be. And so allowing that process to naturally and organically unfold, releasing attachments and allowing yourself to flow effortlessly to who and what and where you're meant to be at all times without attachments. Um, and there's, there's so another thing that I'm being guided is there's so many attachments to the twin flame um, journey right now. And really, we need to release those attachments. If it's a functional, healthy thing for you in this lifetime, go for it. If it doesn't seem right and it always seems like it's a cat and mouse chain uh, chase, really look within and say, is this what I'm meant for? And really ask yourself, I wasn't meant for this. This was never part of the plan that I know. And start to recognize how every time the connection comes around, you lose you potentially, right? Let's just be honest. Let's be real. Do you lose your energy source then because you're focused too much on something that you desire? Know that you always have this connection. This connection is you always in the etheric realm. And you can always tap straight in to whatever part of you, if you're a part of the twin flame relationship essence, walking in this physical plane where your twin flame is physically on this physical plane as well and there's no connection or there's just the cat and mouse game so much energy coming through right now and I'm just being guided to share I hope that you choose you and stop chasing the cat and mouse game for some, it may turn around and bring that person to you and it may do exactly what it's meant to do. Um, but for others, I feel as though you're gonna find everything that you need and it's all gonna be there in divine and perfect timing. And I'm also being guided that if you have a specific soul mission to do here with someone and they're not um, doing their part, there's a backup plan for everything and that no one person, place, or thing is guaranteed in our life ever because we have free will choice, which is why I got upset yesterday about the tyranny that I was seeing in the world and I made that post. And I don't usually try to get into that controversial stuff, but I felt guided very strongly to speak on that a little bit. And so not saying that that connection would be any form of tyranny, but definitely saying that at some point you have to choose you. And at some point you have to choose what it is and who it is that you're allowing to come into that energy space. Um, and recognizing when people are attached to you, right? And they're sending you their energy because they don't know, like you're their muse, right? They're healing muse. You're that light that they're shine, that's shining and they want that, right? Um, but recognizing that you can be that light and not allow that energy to penetrate your energy to kind of take from you either. People also need to do the steps that they need to take 
in order to evolve and shift within them, right? The spiral that we go up and holding that balance. And if so, if someone violates your energy, blocking them, move, removing them out of your energy is definitely a part of sovereignty as well. Um, anything here in Facebook world, Instagram world, YouTube world, um, whatever platform, even TikTok world, like any of the social media platforms that are out here right now, they're all an energy exchange. And so if your energy is being violated by another person's energy, please, I'll guide here. Make sure that you're protecting your energy, okay? I have removed many from my personal page, and it is not because of wrongdoings or um, darknesses. It is because the connection's not there. Maybe it was. Maybe it never was. Maybe the connection was sought out for... Um, reasons that weren't in alignment with where you're going. Maybe there was chasing of things and a desire to have um, to have so many connections, but realizing that you don't need to really be connected to anything in order to be connected, right? When we recognize that within us, we're able to actually flow and be more available and more seen and more connected than anything because we're not trying to force connections. We're not trying to... Um, connections can just be what they're meant to be then, right? They can just flow and it doesn't have to be cringy. I don't know, cringy is the word that I just keep hearing, cringy. Um, so allowing that space for yourself as well I'm um, just moving the sage bowl because I want to try to come into um, a message. Uh, I was really drawn to the total loss mystical shaman deck. Um, <laughs> let's see what the, the guides have to share. There's just so much energies right now and you choose. You choose who you want to tangle with. You choose who it is that you want to interact with. And it doesn't matter what connection you have on the etheric uh, plane. Because if you're not vibrationally resonating in this plane, you have every right to pull your energy back. I've recently done it for myself. And that's another reason why I had to pull myself back too. Because I've had to recognize where I had my energy that wasn't serving me. And so, um, before we get started, if you would like to do a clearing, we can do a clearing and I can kind of guide you through the things that have been um, guided for me. And so, take a deep breath all the way in, through the nose, into your belly. Call upon your higher self. Call upon Mother Gaia, Father God, your entire team of white light. Call upon all of your dragons if you work with the dragons. Call upon the energies that you choose to work with. Ask them to stand with you as you cleanse, purify, sanctify, and strengthen your mind, your body, and your soul. Ask them to help you to remove all cords, hooks, attachments that you may have picked up, all contracts that you may have agreed to, knowingly or unknowingly, willingly and unwillingly, spoken and unspoken, freely. Ask them to help you to send them back, dissolve and disintegrate all that is not in alignment with your highest vibrational essence and movement forward. To free the space, to free the energy. And once you feel complete with that, and my guides have me do that um, usually two or three times, usually three. Sometimes for setting foundations, um, and I do that and I cleanse and you can feel all of it releasing. 
Um, and so when we do the disintegration and the dissolving, that has a lot to do with our Akashic records. And I have been guided very much so, um, I forget since when, but for like the last month or two, I have been guided very strongly to really make sure that my Akashic energies and records all stay clear because sometimes we can walk into things energetically that we don't even realize we are and so clearing that out asking your guides to stand with you powerfully and help you to dissolve and disintegrate anything that is not in alignment with where you know you're going it will clear the path, it will dissolve it, it will disintegrate it. Um, some of the other things that I do with the cords, the hooks, the projections, oops, I'm sorry, I just totally kicked the whole sand. Um, some of the other things that I'm guided to do is I will send it back to where it came from with the cords and the hooks um, because of projections. If it's projections, this is when I do it. Um, and you really have to feel into this. Um, I will ask my guides and I will set my intentions as love and peace for doing this and I will ask them to send it back to where they came, where it came from so that they may feel it, breathe it, be it, experience what they are sending firsthand in hopes that they may learn what they need to learn from sending and dealing and and operating from that energy sending that out to others um, and I will do that sometimes with higher um, energy presences that I hold with me um, to help with the the learning process if someone's continually sending things to me that's not okay I will push it back I um, mean I have been guided to do that so you have to make sure that that's in alignment with you um, I know for me and my practice that's not crossing any form of boundaries that's me shielding me doing what I need to do so that others can hold their container with all of them to feel all of them instead of projecting it over to me um, and so that's been a huge part of my journey, but I've been guided to share that here because I also feel as though that's a huge part of others' journey as well. Um, because as we heal and as we deal with the things that can seem dark within us, it can trigger us. Other people have the tendencies to trigger us. Um, and so when we're triggered, we really need to get super accountable so that we're not sending our own crap then back to someone either. And so if you word it in those ways, you will never send your own stuff back to anyone. Um, it'll always be what they're sending projection and negativity that doesn't align with unconditional love to you back. Okay, um, so it's very important that you use your words and the practice that you do um, as well because, you know, we don't want to cause any harm, but we also don't want to take any shit. Does that make sense? And that's part of the do no harm, take no shit. Don't take it. Don't. If you recognize that you are being over inundated by projections, send them back. They're not yours. It's not your baggage to carry. It's not your burden to carry. Someone that's not resonating with you anymore is not your issue. They have to deal with themselves. If they want to have access, they have to deal with themselves. And so, um, and that's not harming anyone. And that's not thinking that you're better than anyone. That's protecting your precious energy because your energy is here to do things. If you're here and you're watching this message, you have an important, powerful um, role in everything that's unfolding right now and you need to protect that energy field because you're a force to be reckoned with and your energy is sacred and your energy is precious so standing in your power center and coming from your heart and so again it's the integration that came through last night so strongly it is the power center the I am your divine masculine within you is where your is what's in your solar plexus in the work that I do integrate Integrating that with your heart chakra and leading yourself with your power and allowing yourself not to be um, dimmed, not to be projected on, not to be downtrodden because of other people's projections. So it takes a lot of accountability with yourself and authenticity with yourself to look in your own mirror and see what's you and what's not. It takes practice, a lot of practice, and it takes a lot of patience and a lot of compassion with you 
to be able to hold that space for yourself. Um, it's taken me many years to get to that point. Um, so I feel like that message is pretty complete there. So I can continue to try to pull some stuff with the cards. And like I said, I was guided with this deck here, um, which is the Mystical Shaman deck for a collective message. Um, and I don't know if anyone has seen the song that I posted this morning, but as I was starting to get ready and I was losing myself in the intoxication of the fragrance in my home this morning, um, the one song that has been just constantly running through, and I've heard it more than ever, because I don't know if you can hear the music right now, but I have um, Do <clears throat> Donna DeLore Radio by Pan on Pandora, and it's on, and... So when I put it on, the first song on was that La Luna song that I posted. So if you feel any resonance to this message, I would highly recommend that you listen to that song because I feel like there's a message there for you. So the bottom of the deck is the circle. So, and what that means is you've come full circle within yourself. You've seen, you've done the work. You're flying with the eagles. Um, if you're here, eagle medicine might be something that is extremely powerful for you. It may be one of your totems. It may um, be the way that spirit is trying to communicate with you. You have keen vision and you see higher than others are able to see sometimes because of the way that you connect with spirit. So don't allow anyone to ever dim that within you because if you have this spirit animal, there are so many other um, energies that might come in and try to distract you or uh, project upon you to make you think that you don't have this connection but you do and you see very clearly so trust the connection there open yourself up and keep yourself aligned with that the lightning bolt is going to strike and things are going to change um, I feel like this message right here is very specific with um, So this has nothing to do with the card itself. This message right here has everything to do, there's Archangel Michael is protecting whatever's gonna be happening for you in this, in this realm with this, if you connect to this. Um, and I feel like it has a lot to do with the, I keep hearing blue ray, but I don't feel like that's the same thing, um, but maybe it is, I, cause I keep seeing like, um, like a blue topaz fire almost is what I'm kind of seeing. So just allow yourself to really let the energies let you flow um, and recognize that if you're going to be connecting with people, there has to be an equal resonance and just recognize that no one's ever going to come to you. There has to be... Um, so I'm being shown like the figure eight. And so when the both sides come around, they have that moment to meet. And then if it doesn't resonate there, like let's just say one gets there quicker, then you go back around, right? So you never miss anything. It just keeps going until you eventually align. So just recognize that Archangel Michael is walking with you as well to help you with that if this is resonant for you. You have to give away your heart. You have to do things that are in alignment with... Um, your true north really diving into you making changes and coming more from your heart um, and allowing that integration that really just felt like it set in deep last night with the solar plexus and the higher heart and heart chakras um, to really take forward because in order to step onto the path that it is um, the golden dharma path that i keep seeing like in order to step onto that path you have to fully give your heart and trust that you're doing what needs to be done take that leap of faith um, ground yourself into Mother Gaia for fortitude and sustenance and allow yourself to grow and bloom and become all that you can be. Um, there's definitely a lot going on with the heart chakra, so you really need to get yourself grounded and rooted in really, really deep into your, um, your root chakra, your sacral chakra, and your solar plexus so that you can hold the energy that's coming through your heart, if that makes any sense. Uh, that's what's coming out with that card. The winds are changing, and so allow yourself to flow. Um, I do feel like there's some people that are just really holding on to attachments to people, and you need to let that go because I feel like 
some people are there to be amused, to help shine light, to help you grow into you. But I also feel like there's some people that could watch this, I'm being guided to say, um, or that are watching this, that you have a connection to someone and it feels like a masculine energy still. There's a connection that you have to someone that you got to let go. You got to let go because it's not... Um, it's not in your vibrational resonance. And that doesn't mean that it might not ever be. It just means that you're focused on someone who is shining a light is what I'm, this is the vision that I'm seeing, okay? There is a masculine that either is watching this or will watch this that is focused on someone that, a feminine that is shining a light and desiring to be with her, but she's not for you, not in this lifetime. Um, I don't know if you have a connection in the eternal um, ethereal realm or not. Um, I feel like you crossed paths with this woman because you, she helped. She's helping you heal in very big ways. So I feel like you... Um, to prepare you for what you're going for, if that makes sense. Uh, that's for a specific masculine. This is a general reading, but that's definitely what I'm picking up on. Um, so allow the thunder to roar and rumble through your life because the lightning is going to be coming and just shaking everything free, rumbling everything wide open. So allow yourself to flow, okay? Um, and drum. I was really kind of shown too. I thought I was going to do the drum, but I went to the bowl to start it open. I saw myself... Um, like eight months ago maybe i was at the ocean maybe less than that six months ago i was at the ocean and i was drumming up the sun and so that's kind of what i saw was like the sun is coming and so drum it in right those are your take your footsteps beat take your footsteps and beat march to the beat of your own drum <laughs> there we go got it out um, because it's going to rain and you have the ability to change things. You have the ability to make it rain and have all the things come into your life. Um, and I know it's not on this card, but I'm definitely seeing the eagle medicine coming through here again very, very powerfully. So keep yourself connected to your source because eagle medicine is coming through and march to the beat of your own drum. Do not allow yourself to be dimmed by anyone around you because you have such keen insight to um, higher realms that not everyone sees things the way you see it and be open to the fact that sometimes you're not always right and you need to still kind of adjust things too within like sometimes my daughter is my biggest freaking teacher um some of the things that i'm working through in this moment she saw last year and it's beautiful to come to that full circle realization. So there's that full circle card, which was the first card, right? Where you're just like, oh, now I understand how that can be reality, how that could be something that she would say, right? Because she's wiser than wise. Um, yeah, anyway, we'll leave it there. You're gathering your strength for the harvest. The harvest is coming, and it's divinely guided, and it's going to unfold in divine and perfect timing. Um, there's so much beauty. I'm also seeing peacock medicine, and it's funny because I almost put the peacock emoji on um, the coffee and connection part where I put it in the comment aspect of it. Um, like the header, whatever it's called. I almost put a peacock emoji there because that your that energy is powerful right now. And so allow yourself to have that wisdom and that knowledge come through you. It, it flows to you, through you, and as you always. Um, but sometimes you shut it down because you get stuck in here. And so really releasing that um, is what's going to help you. I'm also guided to go and use the... The Lemuria deck. Um, let's see what comes out. O 
open yourself up and listen to the sound of the universe. The universe is you. You have the power of the universe within you. The, your voice uh, is the power of the universe. Um, so use that accordingly, right? You know, everything that we do, all the steps that we take comes from universal God source energy, God goddess, right? Um, so as you align, you really are creating, you're taking the ancient wisdom and bringing it into the beautiful future. And allow yourself to be that bold. Allow yourself to be that energy source. Um, allow yourself to really shine that light. And I'm also seeing, again, the balance of the solar plexus and sacral chakra and the root is what's going to help carry you through this because it's going to be huge. Um, and so it's almost like the pillar of light with Isis, right? Um, so where we ground ourselves in, anchor super deep into Mother Gaia, tether straight up to Father God. And we allow ourselves to be that beacon of light. And so as you become that beacon of light, it's natural that people get naturally attracted and want that, right? But you have to protect that energy, okay? You have to protect that energy. So really allow yourself to get anchored in and tethered up and come so that when you're doing that, you are fully um, sustaining yourself through Mother Gaia and tethering up with clarity to Father God and then you bring those essences both from Father God with clarity and grounding from Mother Gaia through the bottom three chakras and through the top three chakras and you meet at that heart space and you radiate out to everyone you come in contact that way. And so when you stand in that essence, you naturally and organically are just going to be of desire to everyone. And so that's when the, um, like the energy of the masculine energy that was channeled through not long ago, that's how that can happen because you just radiate so much that people that might still have things that they have to look at with maybe some codependency issues or, um, whatever's going on inside of them that unhealthy connection to something that's unattainable right it's not meant for you so it's like we attach ourselves to it it's almost like a self-sabotaging thing and the reason that I can say that is because I've been there many times more times than I would like to admit in my life I have not open to that um, because I still had so much healing to do and so when we do that we um, we actually are self-sabotaging so that's just that's a behaviorism character trait of self-sabotaging so really look into the codependency things still within if that recognizes if that message message resonates for you and you recognize part of that because um, there's deeper stuff there. Go deeper under your own hood because that's why there's that infatuation where you're just like, I don't understand it. And so that's why. Um, so trust that, okay? Allow your life force energy to guide you. Stand in that heart space and really allow yourself to come through and shine with all of your... Um, So I just keep hearing the guide saying it's like an enigma. And so like your energy is like an enigma. So just keep allowing that energy to flow um, through you because as you do that, you allow others to, um, to see what that is and to be able to rise to that. You can't make this up. Shine your light. Shine your freaking light. That's right. Don't dim. Don't dim. And don't let anyone that wants to come around, oh, you can't make this up. Up, solar plexus um, so don't let anyone that wants to come around and hold attachments to you for any reason because you might be connected to them um, in very powerful ways in the etheric world if they're not ready in this lifetime they're just not ready if there's no resonance there there's no resonance it doesn't mean that you don't love them you will always love them it actually hurts in the heart chakra right now um, you will always love them and they will always be a part of you but that energy will never get a piece of you again because it's just not right in this lifetime and so you have to just know that and just and and stand in that sovereignty for yourself, okay? Because enough is enough. And when enough is enough, it's just enough. I've pulled my energy back so many times. Um, 
taken for taken but you know I've been taken for granted um, in the past you know we get taken for granted energetically we get taken for granted in the physical world people don't value us they don't see what we know is inside of us and you know why do you want to know why because we're so flipping focused on them seeing us that we lose us so focus on you because the reason people get attached to you and see you and want to be with you is because then they recognize what they fucked up and, lo and lost. And it's not that they were bad and you were better or that they were good and you weren't up to par or whatever the case is, it's not like that. It's an energetic vibrance, uh, a vibration, and it's an energetic resonance. And if you're not resonating on that level with someone, don't try to force it, okay? Let it go, let it go and focus on you. The more you focus on you, the more you heal everything that is in alignment with you, just kind of comes and rendezvous along your path. It's just, it's mystical, it's magical. And I would sooner walk every day holding all of my essence respectfully than chasing someone who's never ever gonna always see my true value because they'll come and they'll see it and then it'll go back to like, oh, uh, you know, the cat and mouse game. Like, I'm not down. I'm not beat for that. That's what my daughter says. I'm not beat for that. <laughs> or something. Maybe that's my terms. I don't know. So the wheel is in your favor. So keep choosing you because you, choosing you, is opening the doors to Dharma. Letting go of the karmic cat and mouse game. Oh my God, it just came through the way I knew I was seeing it. Walk through the Dharma door because that's what you deserve. Let go of the karmic cat and mouse game. It's done. It's over. There's always going to be love. There's always going to be connection. And that connection will never, ever, ever be destroyed in the etheric realm. But in this physical plane, it might not work for you. And allow it to be that way, okay? Allow it. There's a lot of psychic insight coming through right now. And the moon phase, because we just went, and so the, La Luna is all about like um, the moon and, and the connection that we have to Luna, the goddess Luna. And so, um, who is the moon, right? And Selene, um, which is also like selenite. Selenite is selenite's one of my favorite, favorite crystals. If I could only have one crystal, I think it would have to be selenite because, um, and citrine, so too. <laughs> I love my citrine and I love my selenite, but um, yeah. So there's lots of psychic insights that are coming through. So just keep allowing the endings to take place, okay? Keep allowing yourself to have the clarity to walk through the new doorways that are here because of you. And you're gonna be able to cut through the bullshit. Um, you're gonna be able to cut through it. I do feel like someone has, um, again, I feel like there's like an energetic connection where someone keeps trying to pull on you. And so just keep pushing that energy out because there's no one can ever stop you but you. So you gotta believe in yourself wholeheartedly to be able to be on this path to begin with, to be able to be seen, to be able to be felt. You really have to believe. If you don't believe, you're not going to reap what you desire because there's always gonna be that lack, that doubt, right? So let go of the part of you that believes that there's lack and that believes that there's doubt and that it's not gonna work out or, um, you know, just allow yourself to cut through that shit because that's what I'm feeling. This is all about you in your head. You got to allow yourself to cut through the shit in there because there's beautiful new opportunities coming. The Ace of Fire is here and there's beautiful, beautiful new opportunities coming. So change, change your thoughts now towards everything. Start working towards the Dharma, letting go of all that karmic baggage, letting go and closing those doors and allowing yourself to see psychically what you need to see for you. We all have the ability and the power um, of psychic ability, okay? And I've said that many, 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 many times. Ooh, that's 
many, 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 many times, and that, you know, we're here to help each other open ourselves, open our gifts. And so the more you can open, the more you can see with clarity and peace, okay? Um, I do feel like someone here is struggling to make a decision. Someone here is struggling within themselves. If this is you, you have to get out of this mind space. You have to get out of this mind space and tap more into that fiery passion within you. Because the only way that you're going to be able to pull through this mind fuckery that you're doing to yourself is, is to tap into the fiery passion that's inside of you. Um, I definitely see a very strong feminine coming forward and she's got a lot of fiery passion inside of her. There is the queen of fire here. Um, and so that would be the queen of wands. And she... She's coming through very powerfully and saying, don't underestimate yourself because you are stronger than you think. So keep leaning in. Keep leaning into the power. Keep leaning into the fire within. Take that leap of faith and jump because it's time. The time is ripe for you. The time is beautiful for you. Um, find the strength within you to find the balance within you to take that leap of faith. I also see a masculine coming through very strongly. Um, someone that's gonna help. So I'm gonna go back here for a minute and I'm gonna say this, because this is what I'm being guided. This is not people in specific. This is you balancing the masculine and the feminine within you because when you are able to let go of the mind fuckery that happens inside your head, okay, and let go of the patterns that don't serve you anymore and walk into that dharmic path, you automatically open the door to newness, right? And so then you're able to take that leap of faith. And so as that happens, you're grounded and your fiery passion within you takes you through doorways that you never could have fathomed and even created in, in your thought process. So find the strength to find that power within you. Find the strength to get super grounded with your masculine energy and allow the creative feminine fiery passion to flow through you so that you can balance in here at the top of the card is 11 and so they call that the twin flame number right but it's also the balance it's duality it's balance 100% um, masculine and feminine balance within you so that you can hold yourself hold your energy um, and then you'll be falling in love with yourself because you're going to reach new plateaus then. And then maybe new people will come into your life because of that balance. And so there's the beauty of it. But letting go of the attachment of what can or will come because you do this for yourself is really what the work is, right? We have to be the mystical shaman of our own life. And so... Like in my workings with um, shamanic practices, because I have shamanic Yusui Reiki and I have advanced energy shamanic trainings in there, um, where I did an apprenticeship for a year's time, the, um, when we do that, okay, we have to be able to, as that mystical shaman essence, release attachments release attachments and allow ourselves to focus on ourself. So yes, we could say, yes, it's a feminine or it's a masculine energy, but why not just flip it back onto you? Focus on you. Because a lot of times as humans, we get caught up on what we desire. So we can't bring it into tangible reality because we get caught up on the fact, well, I want this person. And so then we get attached to this person. You don't desire this person. You desire something that feels like or seems like or is healthy, right? Because we haven't had healthy. So let's be real about it, okay? You don't necessarily desire this person. You desire healthy, um, intelligent conversations, tangible 
um, connections. So letting go of what it is that you desire so that you can allow yourself to flow. And then again, like that figure eight, it comes back, right? So here's the starting point, right? Here's you, here's the person, maybe if you're talking about people, but so anyone that's meant to be in your life, soul family, anyone, friends, um, lovers potentially, or anything, any people, places, or things that we meet. Here you are back to back at your starting point in the center and you come through your uh, figure eight and you'll either be there before or after and there's no race okay you just keep circling around that figure eight until you eventually meet okay and it's always going to be in divine and perfect timing because you're always going to meet everyone that you need to meet in the exact right moment it's never going to be too late it's never going to be too soon you can't miss it because everyone that is vibrationally in alignment with your dharma and your destiny if you're choosing you and you're doing that hard inner um <clears throat> shadow workings and you're aligning with your root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus into your heart, and from your crown to your third eye to your throat chakra into your higher heart, and you're blending them together and staying tethered up through clarity and anchored in through fortitude and sustenance to Mother Gaia, to Earth, and you're allowing that life force energy. Because in my working, it's not just God. It's the God goddess, right? How do you have duality? How do you have masculine and feminine energy if there isn't two ultimate beings? This is my belief. This is what I've seen. This is the work that I do. You don't have to agree with me. If you don't agree with me, that's okay. I'm not gonna fight you on it. And I don't expect you to succumb to what I see if you don't see that. But that's why for me, we tether up to Father God because that's our God source in masculine form. And we anchor in to Mother Gaia, because that is our goddess force in feminine form. We bring those two energies into balance, meeting in our heart space, within us, because we are them walking in this physical plane. And we radiate out to all we come in contact with. And so when you do that, you, you can find positive re resolutions to any mental fuckery conflict that goes on in here because you quiet the mind and you ground yourself in. And some days it may be easier than others. Moment by moment, it may be easier and harder or whatever the case is. So just take it as it comes. Take it as it flows. Allow yourself to truly be good with you as you are in each moment. This is quite a powerful coffee connection. I don't know, I'm liking it. Ah, look! And there's the king of fire. And we love that. And we love that. We love that. Because guess what? Your totality, your masculine and your feminine energy, well, okay, this is my left hand. So your masculine and your feminine energy coming together, making that figure eight, right? Right? Look at that, figure eight, connecting. And then look, if you look, if you look at that, you can also see the masculine and feminine triangle in that figure eight, bringing it all back to center, your fucking center. Excuse the language, but I don't know, it just felt right. <laughs> so, creating the power couple, yeah, within you, that fiery passion. And you can like see it when someone has it, you can see it. You can't just like ignore that shit and you can't just make it up. You can feel it, you can see it, you can sense it. It comes straight from the balanced energy, vibrating and circulating out from their, their solar plexus and their sacral chakra. And there's healing here for someone through the heart space, maybe even for me, but there's clearing coming up through the heart and the throat chakra with what I just said. Because I think there's like a totality of um, full circle for someone here, right? Like that just brought something, I don't know, it just brought something for someone where you're just like, shit, yes, like I always knew that, but I didn't know that, right? And that's kind of the moment I had this morning or the other day, whatever I said. Um,
Keepers of the Light. Let's see what the Keepers of the Light have to say. Uh, so powerful, powerful energy, guys. And you can't make it up. You cannot make it up. It feels complete. It really does. So I think I'm going to end it here um, with what was shared this morning with Coffee and Connections. I'm super grateful, by the way, for everyone who did show up and who is here um, because I feel like everyone that is going to watch as well, I feel like this message was super on point to what's going on, and I hope that it reaches everyone that it needs to reach. Um, in divine and perfect timing, and I trust that it will. I really do. There's actually, it's kind of crazy to me. Um, there's actually a lot of cards coming out of the Keepers of the Light, so there's quite a few messages that want to come through. <clears throat> so the bottom of the deck is this lady venus downloads and understanding so this um hopefully has helped you to understand what maybe you've been downloading right and have a better understanding within yourself maybe something that was said here just helped it be that light bulb moment for you um, Mary Magdalene is here and the teacher awakens and so awaken you we are all teachers okay you're my teacher I'm your teacher this person's my teacher this person's my teacher everyone we come in contact if you are willing to hold yourself accountable everyone we come in contact with has something to teach us has something to show us usually most times let's just say that um don't let anything stop you from shining don't let a connection to someone that you thought you were supposed to have stop you from shining don't let anything fucking stop you because you are a force to be reckoned with okay so allow the sacred vision to come through okay the duality is you you are the duality that balancing that we just spoke of with the feminine and the masculine it does not matter who shows up in this physical life you may know you were meant for something and it just didn't work we have free will we have free will but you best believe if you're meant for something whatever's meant to be with you is going to be there just trust in that trust in the universe trust in not knowing okay trust in that Call upon um, the Holy Amethyst to help you alchemize the pains and the things that are going on. But I'm also seeing with this, and I was also guided to say this earlier, and I don't remember when, and it never came out. Um, so thank you for the reminder, guides. But so, um, and I know that she's not directly correlated with the violet flame, but when we do that clearing, that's what it is. When we do the clearing and we clear our Akashic, right? We should be asking our guides to help us. <clears throat> with the violet flame to burn away disintegrate if you feel it that strongly don't be afraid to call upon these tools because these tools are not just for me or for someone else they're for you too okay they're not for one person they are for all of us because we are all god goddess walking around in this earthly plane in some way shape or form Whoever your higher self is, you are part of God Goddess, okay? So use the divine alchemy within you to help you create that and clear that. Keep yourself purified. If you feel like you're becoming weighed down and the confusion is setting in and you don't know why the confusion's there, run through with one of those clearings that I did at the beginning of this. And if you need to go back to this, go back to it or create one of your own. That's kind of what my guides have walked me through. That's what they showed me, taught me. Um, and I listened to that, okay? The Shekinah, Shakti essence, this is the same thing. It's Shakti, Shekinah. Depends on the word you wanna use. It's all the same. The divine feminine is being unleashed powerfully to be seen felt i mean you can't make it up you got you got all these feminine energies here right now you got mary magdalene you got the um sacred vision you got the holy amethyst you got shekinah it's all here it's all one so it's all connected and so <laughs> it's no surprise to me 
that Archangel Michael's right there protecting it all. Uh, he is the divine protector. Um, and there's so much more that to learn there. Um, so dance with that. Dance with this element, okay? Dance with it. The partnership within. That's what matters. Dance with that partnership. Don't focus on something outside of you. Because that divine masculine and divine feminine is within you. Okay? It's within you. And once you have that, and you anchor in, and you tether up, and you bring that out, nothing can stop you. You're unstoppable. Unshakable. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. I'm flying with the flipping eagles, and I'm loving it, right? And so be there. Allow yourself to be there. Because you'll allow yourself to experience grace in all of its forms. So really allowing the energy of the rose to come through your heart space. Really allowing everything to just bring through you, through that heart. Let love lead you. Let the waves of inspiration come to you, through you, and as you in that beautiful spiral through the solar plexus and the sacral chakra and the heart chakra just spiraling spiraling bigger and bigger and bigger connecting all of your chakras all of your essence outward to who you come in contact with you're divinely guided and protected so you can expect miracles, my friends. The 1010 portal's here, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to come on today. For whatever reason, I kept thinking tomorrow was, um, wait, yeah. For whatever reason, I kept thinking tomorrow was the 10th. I had to look again, because I was like, wait, maybe it is, but it isn't. <laughs> Today's only the eighth, but it's a powerful day. Eight, again, is all about the infinity of things. So allow the doorway to open the divine, di the divine divinity plan. I don't even think that makes any sense with how I said it. To you. And let it spiral to you. Ooh. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Magic. Magic is happening right now, folks. You are witnessing magic through you. To you, through you, and as you. So let it be you. Huge heart healings right now. <clears throat> Huge heart healings. So just keep sinking in. Work with the emerald green essence of Archangel Raphael as well. If you feel like you need to heal some deeper emotional things, allow it to come through the throat chakra. There's some tension through the feminine side of the throat chakra into the higher heart. Um, so I feel like that, if for whoever could be resonating with that message, focus on the heart healing. And you'll loosen that pressure up and you'll come right through the heart space and it'll just come right down. Um, and your devotion is going to bring all of this to you. And look, there's the peacock feather. <laughs> your devotion is bringing all of this to you. So stay focused and devoted to you. Even if you're in a divine partnership. How are you going to keep that divine partnership healthy if you're not staying focused and devoted to you? To keep you in alignment so that you can hold that space. Hold that energy. And yeah, when you're in relationship, it's a give and take and it's, um, it's a blending, right? It's a blending and, and you balance, but you have to keep yourself balanced too so that you can bring forth what you desire, the connections that you desire. And then you work it, you work it out from there, you know? You work it out from there. So that was really powerful, coffee and connections, and I'm super grateful. I'm super grateful to be here. I'm super grateful to be clear to be here. And I'm grateful that you joined me. And I hope to see you all again next time. Continue to keep manifesting for yourself with this 1010 portal. You can truly expect miracles to come. Um, and so to bring forth things into your tangible reality, you have to be able to balance yourself and be willing to flow and take the action steps that need to be taken and let go of the people, places, and things that just need to go. And it's not because you don't love them or that they're not good enough. It's because it's just not there anymore. The vibrational resonance is not there. 
So you have to let go of the karmic cycles of the cat and mouse game and you do uh, the, the, the cat and mouse chase, right? Like the Tom and Jerry. I just keep seeing Tom and Jerry just flying past me and it's fun, right? It's fun. It's, it's frustrating as all hell. And then you're just like, wait, why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this? Get yourself there. Pull yourself through and allow yourself to shine. With so much love and so many blessings, I hope that you have a beautiful, magical rest of your day from my heart to your heart. I hope that you could feel, I hope that you had clarity here, and I hope that you received everything that you were looking for through spirit here. So much love and many blessings. Until the next time, have a good day.